you're on. <laughs> Hello ladies, happy Friday night. I'm sorry, I feel like this week of heartbutt keeps getting delayed and delayed, but uh, Costa Rica is known for internet droppage, which is why I have two Wi-Fi's and also just power goes out. And the funny thing about that is that no one even misses a beat. It's like, oh, grab a candle, pour some more wine, and let's go. But not so great for live feeds. So anyway, I apologize, but I'm happy for those of you who are with me on a Friday night. And for anyone that you know that is on date night or something else, tag them, and um, hopefully they can watch the replay, because this is going to be a really important one. Um, you know, I spend a lot of time in the group. I spend a lot of time on the page, and I'm always looking for you know, what questions people tend to repeat. So this week's topic is pretty much everything um, that you can do to recover. And, you know, when I was thinking of that subject, it's like, is it recovering from, you know, fascia blasting or is it recovering from heart blood exercises or is it just kind of recovering from life? So I decided to go in the direction of recover from life and my lovely friend Lori can attest that we both need recovery ASAP because today we went to the La Bruja, which means the witch, <laughs> <laughs> yoga class today, which is just very, very intense. You know, she aligns you down to the toe. And then we decided to surf for a couple hours. So just sitting here right now, I'm like, hmm, I can't wait to do these recovery things. So I'm gonna jump right in. You guys are welcome to stop me and ask questions. Lori is on the camera tonight and I told her if you guys have something interesting you're asking, we'll go right into that. But I do wanna make sure, you know, one of the things that I think is the absolute most important thing to understand is what the fascia looks like on the inside. So Lori, you can zoom in as much as you want. So this is just one ultrasound from our study. And if you haven't seen the study, it's this to me is like where we should call the New York Times and be like, yo, have you seen this? Because no one else has done studies like this and, and seen this. And I think this is what's so important with understanding not only how we recover, but why things look the way they do and, and motivation to keep going and all of that to me is all tied to these ultrasounds because you know it's like why don't be mad at data this is just data <laughs> so the first thing that i'm going to talk about is hydration so when we look at this one you can zoom in a little bit more so when you're seeing this this is the skin level this layer right here is the fat and then all this white stuff all the way down to the bone and this is the side of a thigh to a femur Everywhere that you see that white crusty stuff that doesn't look good, that is when the tissue is, let's just say messed up, okay? So that could be dehydrated, it could be adhesions, it could be both, it could be a thickening, which people call fibrosis or scar tissue. So all these words that we're using out in the medical community, we're really just describing, you know, let's just call it not cool fascia, okay? So what's so amazing is this is just 90 days later. So if you guys have read my book, we talk about the structural fascia and the interstructural fascia. So where you see this nice organized line, that's right on top of the muscle. And then this is between that next layer of muscle tissue. And then all of this is the interstructural fascia. And you can clearly see that new collagen fibers have been laid down. There's more hydration. Um, and then obviously we're gonna talk about, you know, detoxing and, and everything else that we can do. But I think it's super important to understand what's going on below the surface before we start talking about, you know, what it looks like essentially. So the last thing that you want to have going on with your fascia is for it to be dehydrated, okay? So just think of it literally like if your fascia is a desert and it gets crusty and dusty and gross. That is what happens when we are dehydrated in general. Okay, so there's all kinds of guidelines. I don't need to become the water expert, but what I can tell you is that you need for your water to be received into the cell. And those of you who follow me know that I'm very much into vibration and energy and electric pulses okay so if we're not getting our proper electrolytes along with
with our water, then there's a chance that even though we're drinking tons of water, that it's not actually being received into the cell. So I wanted to just, I figured, you know what, might as well whip out my own book since I talk about it. So those of you who do not have my book, literally you can find just such an incredible base understanding of fascia and it'll make everything else make sense if you read the book. I know some people aren't readers, but listen, I think it's pretty cheap now. We also have the audio book. And on page 81, this is sad, Lori, I really have to use my glasses, and my book is pretty big print. So if we talk about electrolytes, what we're actually talking about, and it makes sense, we were talking about an electrical charge. So that's what helps us not only accept the water into the cell, but actually helps transmit the messages for movement, which is obviously hugely important for heart blood because we want the nerve to tell the ass to grow, right? right. <laughs> so um, when we're talking about electrolytes, um, these are minerals, and they're simple. They're things we've all pretty much heard of, which is sodium, potassium, calcium, bicarbonate, magnesium, chloride, chloride and hydrogen phosphate. So those are things that if you are an amazing eater, that you may be able to get your daily allowance of electrolytes from fruits and vegetables. I know I eat a ton of vegetables. Lori vouched for me. I had a big plate Definitely. of vegetables today with a couple of camarones, <laughs> which is shrimp. Um, however, if you're doing things to dehydrate, uh, meaning like Honestly, me and Lori being in the ocean today, that just like sucks the water out of you. You wanna up that water intake, and then if you don't feel like you're getting enough fruits and vegetables, or you're just not that great at calculating it, I'm such a fan of noon tabs, okay? I do not work for noon tabs, by the way. These are all things that I just um, personally use, and they make sense to me scientifically. And before we go any further, I have like a whole little array of things that I like. Um, and they're all in my Amazon store. No, it is not for me to make money. Trust me, that's not the way I make money. But I wanted to put it all together in one place. So there's none tabs, cold packs, everything that I'm gonna talk about tonight, either whether it's my brand or if it's off brand, you can find it in one spot. So if somebody can, from my staff, can just post the link to my Amazon store, that way we don't have to <laughs> do tons of screen, screenshots of everything and what she say and all that. So none tabs, N-U-U-N, I've been using these for years and I'll tell you what I do like about them is that they have all of those electrolytes that I just mentioned in a tab and you can break it in half and stick it in a water bottle. So those of us who travel or, you know, you just don't want to be messy, you can throw them in your purse and then you can get your water at work or, you know, whatever your day allows and then you know for sure that you're getting your electrolytes. So the first thing on our list of how do we recover is, you know, you're, you're swimming upstream if you're not getting your hydration and your electrolytes. So if you're one of those people that's like, uh, you know, I didn't drink about eight of these today, then that could be something that could be working against you. So there you go. All right, Lori, any questions on the water and electrolytes? How many noon tablets should you take per day? I would just say read it and go with as recommended. I will tell you this, our body will use what it needs and basically pee out the rest. Um, loosely, I can tell you what I do is I'll do eight uh, ounces, no, I'm sorry, 16 ounces of water with two tabs and sometimes twice a day, just depending on what else I get. Um, if you guys followed during New Year New You, I was saying one of the best ways to uh, get electrolytes, and it's just so easy to get here in Costa Rica, is to crack open a coconut, like actual coconut water, put a little salt, a little bit of lime, it has everything that you need. So, you know, you can go the <laughs> manufactured route or you can grab a pipa coconut and put a little salt and lime in it. So, um, I also, I guarantee you, and I post it, I'm more than happy for you guys to jump into my feed. If you have some great, like, home remedy electrolytes, love it, go for it. I'm sure that the juices that we did this morning were would fall in that category. We probably got all the electrolytes that we needed, but I for sure did not get enough water. <laughs> this is going downtown in the Black House tonight. Lots and lots of water. Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk about is this is more for recovery um, of the skin tissue. So this is more about fascia blasting. 
So if you do not have my after blaster cream, you really should get it. I forget because I designed these so long ago, like really how awesome they are and that they were formulated to go with the process. Um, but they have uh, Arnica in them, which is a healing agent. Um, they have aloe vera, which is a soothing agent. They have vitamin E and they have a skin tightener. Skin tightening is something that I see on the page every single day. And I will tell you, I can sit here and say that this is infused with a skin tightening agent that is patented that I have licensed to put in here. I didn't even invent it. And it's been through plenty of peer reviewed studies and shown that it has tightened the skin. So if you're not using this afterwards, shame on you. <laughs> Only if you're talking about loose skin. Um, but in terms of uh, the after blaster, I would say one thing that you could add with it, like if you're just one of those people who's a bruiser, um, is that you can add uh, oral Arnica tabs. And that's just something you can pick up in your local CVS. We also have that in um, the Amazon store. So you can go check out all the weird stuff that I like in there, okay? So if we don't have any questions about after blaster cream, not to mention it smells awesome. This is my you know, daily skincare, even for my face. People are always asking me about my skin. I think it is that ocean and after blaster cream because I don't use anything else. I'm just not a very good, you know, I don't do all the skincare. I've gone the low maintenance route. I'm out of Beverly Hills, the nails are off, <laughs> the hair extensions are out, <laughs> the hair is cut. I'm only wearing makeup for you ladies tonight, okay? All right, let's talk a little bit about the types of uh, bruising that we can have because, you know, people will say, or, you know, is this too much bruising, you know, or like, did I overdo it here? You know, uh, why, why am I not bruising? And so what I want to do is just kind of go back to the ultrasound and you can just loosely film this, Lori. So here's the thing. If your fascia is really trashy right here at the surface, like you can see it in the before ultrasound. Look how like mangled up the fascia is right in her fat, right? So this is the fat layer right here, the vertical cords. That's when you go to Wikipedia and look up cellulite and they say the tethered cords. What they should say is the crappy fascia because that's what it is. So if this fascia is crappy and you go in with the fascia blaster and you start to break up some of those adhesions, which we want to do, then the blood is gonna flush to that area. So if your surface tissue is bad, you're gonna be somebody that has a bunch of bruises, you know, pop up, they're right at the surface, they typically don't hurt, um, and that's okay. I feel like that's great, and as soon as the bruise starts to fade and you don't have any swelling, then you can continue. And I'm hoping that if you are a bruiser, um, that you are using a, <laughs> Lori, we need recovery, my bad. Um, you need to be using a small clawed tool, okay? Because these claws are small enough that they keep you from going too deep. I'm so about this, by the way. Can we just, so I don't know if y'all saw it, but we have the prototypes. I'm trying to get for Black Friday, look how massive that is, our extenders. We've been working on these for about two I gotta years. I got to zoom out. But later tonight, this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> It makes it really, really easy. And I also like it because, you know, even for legs or whatever, you just, you, you can't get too, too much pressure with this. Um, so then let's talk about if you're bruising and your bruises are more red or they kind of look, um, they look like they're not at the surface. So if you're somebody who's gone in with the bigger claws of the fascia blaster and you're breaking up areas down in here, then those areas are gonna bruise a little more red-like. So is anybody, throw up some hearts if you've had this process. Cause I know for me, when I very first started blasting, I had a lot of like hail damage style uh, cellulite. And when I broke that up, I was like, oh, whoa, this thing is really, really powerful. And I had quite a bit of surface bruising. It wasn't painful, it actually felt Got a lot better. of hearts. Yeah, and so then I went probably a year or more without any bruises until I started getting deeper and deeper and deeper, adding cupping, really going in, having uh, professionals work on me. And then it's like all of a sudden, you know, I was getting those red bruises and I know that that's from the deeper tissue. Sorry, the camera's moving, that's me. 
Okay. <laughs> Wait, let me prop my legs. It's hold on. It's hard to hold the camera, guys. Be nice to Lori. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's me. Hold on. Let me get it. Okay. All right. I'm holding it with my knees. Let's okay, go. Okay. Any She looks like she's levitating on a poof over there. <laughs> <laughs> they can't wait for the extenders. Um, does it hurt? Is it okay to, um, what if your bru bruises hurt? If your bruises hurt, I would say back out a little bit, right? And maybe switch to the smaller claw tool because if the bruises hurt, it probably means that you've broken up something at the surface and then a little deeper and maybe a little deeper. So it's kind of like bruise on bruise on bruise. Um, particularly if they sort of swell up a little bit, um, that is just, you just need to back out because it really is better. And, and let me say this, I blast myself at a level 10. I go very, very hard, but I've been doing it for 10 years. So if you're still new or, you know, you haven't been consistent, think of it more like a cake, you know, break up the icing, next layer of cake, next layer of icing, next layer of cake, rather than trying to, you know, go in and scoop it out, which I get it. It's kind of like you you feel something and you're like, ah, you know, I want that to go away right now. Um, so just, just back out and go layer by layer. Um, and also if your bruises are sore, you want to definitely use the Arnica. You want to take Arnica and you want to most certainly ice it, which is where we are headed next. I want to talk Wait, what if you don't bruise? So if you don't bruise, it either means that you've already restored the tissue. So I keep going back to the ultrasounds because I think it just makes so much sense. So I mean, I'll come to you. Later. Okay. I'll <laughs> if I can get up, I swear I'm so tight. So if you look at this ultrasound, you know, this woman right here, like just has a teeny bit left right there. But look, this is nice and smooth. This is all nice and smooth. All these collagen fibers have been laid down. All that's nice and smooth. So she would have to push all the way into this layer to get a bruise and it would be a baby bruise and you might not even be able to see it from the surface. So imagine this when she first started. So imagine if she took her blaster, broke through all of that stuff down in here and into this terrible adhesion, what kind of bruise do you think she would have? So this is what I want you thinking about is just imagining your tissue. I really wish I could afford to have every single person who buys the fascia blaster ultrasound where we could look at it. But you know, this, this was consistent in the study. We saw this with all of the participants, so I think it's reasonable to say that, you know, this is what we, are, we would see on a massive scale with all of our fascia blaster sisters. So give me a thumbs up if that made sense, because I don't want you just asking a question and getting your quick answer. I want you to actually be able to visualize it and understand it, and when you do have a bruise, or you maybe you don't have a bruise, but you feel like you have a bruise, that you understand that you know, this is layer by layer by layer. And I wanna say that bruising is not the goal because we're, you know, if your fascia is good, like this woman's was at 90 days, you might be able to, to blast at a full force and not get a bruise. It may just be a massage and a, and a detox and like a, a feel good. So it's not that we're looking to create a bruise unless you absolutely you know you have an adhesion, you have a big dent in the side of your leg, then you might say, oh, let me go after that, and then when you do get a bruise, you're like, yeah, <laughs> you know, you're going down. So um, let's talk a little bit about inherent swelling. So this, again, is a, a product of how good your tissue is to start with and how intensely you go. So some people who are super beyond bound, they might blast really lightly and they may swell all over because it's the first time that their blood has really even started moving. And particularly if they didn't do a full body blast to move it out. So if you're noticing that you wanna go lighter and you wanna go more full body versus really going after like a cellulite area or a specific injury. So I've, I've seen it happen where, you know, somebody had a very adhesed knee and they went in and just blasted the knee and then they were like, my knee swole and I'm like, well, duh, you know, like it is a treatment, right? So for that person, I would say go less, use the face blaster, blast all the way to the foot and all the way to the hip. So swelling is one of those things that you really can avoid um, with fascia blasting, but if it does happen, and in general for recovery, it's awesome to use ice. So this is something that I have not told you guys about, um, but we're, I'm desperately trying to get these for, um, 
Black Friday along with the extenders. So we have not only like this size, but full blown mats that you can lay on or under. They're very uh, like jelly filled. These, Lori's never seen these, so I'll let you squeeze it. Oh, wow. So it'll go in like every nook and cranny of your back. Now I do have some on Amazon that I like that are similar, but we decided on mine to do double gel. I love it. Wow. The more you can get ice on your body, listen, nobody loves it at first, okay? But in all my years of working with pro athletes, let me tell you one common thread, they use ice. They either, you know, bag ice on the knee, these things, you know, strapped to the shoulder, leaning on the pads, you know, there's all sorts of expensive stuff that you can do. Uh, you know, cryo freeze, all those types of things. But one thing is for absolute certain, if you've done exercise, and which, by the way, creates little micro tears, okay? And that's good, that's how we grow the muscles. So you're creating this micro trauma, then you're doing the fascia blaster, which creates micro trauma, and ice is like the most beautiful way that you could end that. I am personally gangster, and I will go to the store and get three bags of ice, Fill up my bathtub with cold water, throw in the ice, and get it, okay? So if you can't handle that, I would say go with the ice bags, bags of peas, whatever you want to use. But having that cold, it will literally like zap the inflammation. There's been people, not from fascia blasting, but you know, who came to me with quite a bit of pain, and I'm like, you don't need treatment. You are swollen. You need ice. So sometimes it's the cure-all. Where's my sister? Is she on there? Olivia can tell you that one time she was inflamed and she wanted me to treat her. And I said, no, we are going to go get in that cold swimming pool. And she was not into it. And I drug her in and she cried. But guess what? She felt 100% better. So that's what you got to do is learn to listen to your body and know what type of recovery that you need. And by the way, if you don't know what type you need, do it all. Drink your water. Get on your electrolytes. Use your after blaster cream, get on the, you know, the ice packs or do the cold tub and, you know, you're moving in the right direction to not being sore. Denise says, that sounds brutal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm LOL. I'm really hardcore when it comes to, like, recovering because I have to tell you, I, Lori, validate, you know, wow. I go hard in the paint. Like, I am so injured. As we all know, you know, 20-something surgeries and a rebuilt hip. It's not just a hip replacement, like, you know, has metal screws to hold a pelvis plate and all this other stuff in. You know, and I'm doing very difficult yoga, long walks on the beach. Surfing is one of the most intense exercises. <laughs> like, even the most in-shape people will tell you, like, what did we just do? So recovery from that is huge. And fascia blasting is a huge, huge part of it. Literally right now, if I try to get up... I may throw my back out, but I know how to. I know how to get myself out of pain, which is, it's huge. I know if I throw these cups on here, grab my paddle blaster, you know, get really warm, stretching, all this stuff, I'm gonna, I'll feel fine. So I don't. It, it, it's a liberating, empowering thing that you can do what you want to do, and even if it causes like, ah, you you don't go. Oh my God, I've got to, you know, I'm hurt. You just say, oh, wow, you know, let me let me do what I know. Let me get the tissue to relax. Let me get the inflammation out. Let me make sure that I'm hydrated. And you'd be surprised, you know, how amazing that you feel just from doing that. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about flushing. Flushing. So flushing is like the simplest thing on the planet. And I don't know why, but I feel like it's a down near daily question in the group. What is flushing? <laughs> I almost feel like we should just give it a name, which is just light massage, because that's what it is, okay? So after you blasted, and Laura, you can come stand over me if you just want to okay. like, actually see my leg. So, stand on the cold pad. You know, so say I'm blasting, right? Then it's not going to take me long. My, my blood is flowing, my fascia is good, I am definitely stretched out. So I blasted, and look how quickly I get red. So that's good. You want your tissue to get red really quick. So I've, I've finished my fascia blasting session and I just want to make sure that this doesn't swell. So I just take my hands and I literally just give myself a massage up and down. That's it. This is flushing. 
and it, it feels good and it's it's really intuitive you know I think that we had some very detailed flushing videos but like the reality is it's like I know where it feels good this section feels good right so you just kind of literally go with the flow explore your body see if you find anything make sure that it doesn't swell and it's just a light pressure just above the muscle and uh, you know, in the area of the fascia and the lymphatic system. So that is flushing. Okay. No questions? Let's see. They all want the handles. I know. <laughs> and, the, and the freezing thing. Yeah. The, oh, my gosh. The body, the body bag. <laughs> no, no, that's not what we're going to call it. <laughs> okay. That will be on the internet tomorrow. The full body gel pack is literally... The most amazing thing you can fold it to fit it in your freezer and then when you lay on it it goes you know all in the nooks and crannies of your low back it's it's pretty awesome you guys are gonna love them I've, I've been working on these for almost two years with a manufacturer that already makes gel cold packs and I kept going put more gel in it put more gel in it because I don't know if you guys have ever used them before but if it's not touching you you, you know you don't feel it so the smushiness is to create that uh, coldness further and further inside one. So I'm super stoked about that. Christy says she sometimes uses the handle of the Mini 2 to help with the flushing. Love that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be your hands. And, you know, I mean, I would say, show them so they know I'm not lying. <laughs> I was laying on a tennis ball. <laughs> tennis ball. Back of, back side of the, um, you know, a tennis ball does more like a, like a deep massage hole. So I might blast my back and then lay on the tennis ball. You know, um, I might take the bar of the fascia blaster and go back. You can even use like the sides of the paddle blaster. I've used that for flushing. You know, we've got, if you guys follow the new year, new you, you could use uh, the blades, okay? So it's basically, when you think of flushing, the goal is just to make sure that all of the fluids, particularly the lymphatic system, aren't having a backup. Okay, so if you get a good result by using the backside of my tools, love it. <laughs> Some people like the hands. I know for me, I think because I was a manual therapist, I just feel so many things with my with my thumbs. But some people do, like Justine loves the blades. She does a seek and destroy mission with those. So I think that everybody's different. Okay, so do we want to talk about worse before better? So first of all, I would say, make sure <laughs> that you read my book. And the reason why is that worse before better has to do with the layers of fascia. So I'm gonna go back to this ultrasound one more time because you're not really worse before better, okay? You're better before better. It may just present a little differently. And I can explain it in less than 30 seconds. When, if you are somebody that has big chunks of fascia, it is almost like somebody poured glue into your skin, it spreads out and it sticks to everything inside. That is how really terrible fascia happens and it's amazing. I mean, I still have some in my arms. I just have to make a commitment and be better about blasting. But when you take that big, huge chunk and you begin to break it up, it's not like it goes, oh, let me melt for you. That would be nice. But instead, it'll go from one big chunk to like little smaller chunks. Then those smaller chunks become more kind of like uh, like what the bottom of a fish aquarium would feel like when you're going over it with the blaster. Then it breaks into littler pieces that feel more like sand, and then it goes smooth. Okay, and you know people ask me all the time, well, it, am I going to get stuck in worse before better? It's like no, you're not. You know, if I did not have 100%, let me repeat that, 100% of the participants in the study go from truly worse to better in 90 days, then I wouldn't say keep going faithfully for 90 days if I didn't believe a thousand percent that it would smooth out, okay? But you do have to make sure that your life is not working against you, meaning what happens if you're working diligently on your fascia, but you're not hydrated, right? So you take two steps forward in glass, and you take one step back because you got crusty fascia from needing some water and electrolytes, okay? So 
rather than and say, here's the magic formula for worse before better, I just want you to understand what you're experiencing. So there are some people, I call it, you know, fake tone. Um, I'm thinking particularly of this girl that I have a video of somewhere named Maggie. She's a figure competitor, but she had kind of the tunnel legs. She couldn't get the definition, but they were pretty smooth. And once we started breaking things up, they went from smooth to more dimply. And then they went from more dimply to like shredded and you could see the definition and she could feel her workouts more. So there really isn't a worse before better. They're just maybe a little bit worse looking, okay? And by the way, if you were the person that only cares about the way that you look versus actually restoring your fascia and becoming healthy, I'm not sure that this is the product for you, honestly. You know, I want everybody to look amazing and feel amazing, but the reality is when I look at this, this, this is anti-aging. This is making sure you don't have toxins trapped in your body, you know? So if you have to suffer through a little bit of extra lumps and bumps on your legs to make sure that you've detoxified it, then you know, I don't know a nice way to say it, like get over yourself. <laughs> get over yourself and keep lasting, okay? Um, all right, so let's talk a teeny bit about cupping. Um, low battery. Uh-oh, we have low battery. Okay, so we got the types of, the only thing we have left is cupping, which is also fantastic for recovery. And Lori told me when she got here that she was scared of cupping. <laughs> Why were you scared of cupping? Because of bruising? Yeah, because I I had done it with my acupuncturist, and he did my back, and it was just he just left them on. He never moved them, yeah. like you move well, them. Come and zoom in on this because I'm going to show you. Um, you know, cupping <clears throat> provides blood to you know it's like a hickey, you know, so it's sucking up blood into the cup. And there are a lot of practitioners that practice old school, and it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It feels amazing. I was sharing with Lori that when I went to China, I felt like one of those pieces of art where they basically stick, like they pierce you and hang you by your back. That's how hard the cups were. There's a picture of it somewhere. But I went to like full on China, China. Not Chinatown, China, China. And at the hospital, cupping was like one of the normal things that they do, okay? So Lori, if you see that, like I only sucked it up a little bit. That was one pump. Okay. Okay, these are Accuzone, and again, these are in my store on Amazon. They're only 35 bucks. I, I don't know why for me, but I thought cups were really expensive. They're 35 bucks. Anyway, so that's one pump, and for somebody who's beyond bound, that's gonna feel kind of intense, okay? You can also suck it up two, three, four, okay? So if I left this on there for three or four minutes in this spot, it would leave a hickey, okay? So we're not gonna do that, I'm not into that. So sometimes I pump them a little bit and I'll leave it for like 15, 20 seconds while I put some others on and then I just move it to here. And then I leave it for 10, 15 seconds and then I move it to here. But then there's other people that really like and it's great for recovery to just move it like this. So you're doing kind of the opposite of a massage. You're doing a suction massage. So again, going back to like empowering you women, think about the ultrasounds, again, because this is the real deal. So imagine if you put a cup right here on the skin and the skin lifted up. Look at everything it's gonna drag with it. You know, you're probably stretching the fascia at least through the first, you know, layer or two. And then you're sucking blood to the surface, which is amazing for skin, and it's, it's a great for like a lymphatic drainage or like, you know, moving out toxins and things like that. Um, it's crazy though, I went on the cupping with oh, the the other day and they were like, it's a pseudoscience, there's no research behind it at all. <laughs> then the very next thing was where it was in, you know, a, a medical journal. So I just encourage you that when you go to do your research, there are a lot of people that just are not into alternative opportunities. Um, so don't always believe <laughs> the headlines. Uh, there's plenty of scientific research, peer-reviewed and published, behind my product, behind the blaster oil, behind icing, cryo-freeze, cold baths. There's, you know, real studies. You know, 
definitely not hard to find something on hydration or electrolytes. So everything that I'm presenting you is not a pseudoscience. You know, I'm cracking Connie up. Thank you, Connie. <laughs> <laughs> Did she just slip on the floor? <laughs> no, I just I, I'm I'm showing everything you're talking about. Um, Becky wants to know if you cup your face. She's okay. seen a lot of talk about that lately. So it's interesting. I don't. I haven't heard it in the group. I'm gonna give you my personal experience, which is yes, because one of the techniques in manual therapy, you know, is to pull the eyebrows. You know, so I think of the fascia the same. I I personally do not believe that you can stretch fascia and it makes your skin fall. That's just it, that's just not how it works. Loose loose fascia actually promotes better blood flow and collagen production, okay? So that's like a myth that you can like stretch it or rip it in it and it slides. So I think it's totally safe to use um, on your face. I have a uh, filler and Botox, so I would say just stay away from that altogether. Um, but yeah, I cup, I'll put cups up the back of my neck. I'll put them on my temple. I'll run it across my forehead. It feels amazing, but like on your face, I, I I would have to say that's personal preference, you know. I, I, I could make a case for both, you know. I can make a case that pulling blood to the surface is great, um, but I also could make a case that if you have filler or Botox, that it might be, you know, move it around. I don't know. I would have to have a somebody who's a specialist weigh in on that. Okay. So use at your own risk. <laughs> Everything else is good. All right, awesome. So again, tag your friends. If you know that they didn't get to see this episode, I think this is a really important one because I think a lot of times we think, oh, I can do the heart foot and the blaster. And that's, that's great. You can do just that and you're going to get some result. But if you're like me and you need recovery from your exercise and you, you know, you struggle with pain and things like that, all of these recovery, um, tools, I guess, is, yeah, it's just one thing that you can add, and it's not just good for your blasting and your heart, but it's just good for your life. You know, we need our fluids moving. We need to not live in chronic inflammation, you know, taking care of our skin. These are electric. This is all good things for us, regardless. Even if I never invented the fascia blaster, I could give this same exact uh, talk. So. When you do cupping and blast, do you do them in the same session? I do. I cup first, and I have a scientific reason why. Because it's like a prep for the blasting. So if you think of it like stretching, so again, if you think of it like a piece of pizza, and you stick a cup on it, and then when you pull it up, all the cheese comes up, right? Okay, so we're loosening the fascia, giving way for the fascia blaster to come through and do its thing. It's a totally different technique. The sucking is a fascia stretch, and then the blasting is more like a massage, like a fascial uh, massage. And let me also say, I didn't bring the ball out here, but fashion yoga is another great way to add recovery. And I think there's just basically go type in peer-reviewed research stretching. It, it's good for you. <laughs> and the, the way that we stretch in fascia yoga stretches the long lines of fashion. And there's a lot of people who have like mystery pains they started doing fashion yoga and they just kind of went away. We, we may never know what exactly happened because we're doing the entire body. So I encourage you to do that. We have a group called Fashion Yoga. I'm sure uh, somebody can post the link to that. Somebody, wait, I just lost a question. Uh, what do you recommend for TMJ pain in neck, jaws, and shoulders? I would say I would start with cupping and I would go all along the jawline and the neck with the cuffs, and you could leave them stationary as long as you're okay with, you know, some little hickey circles, or you could do the technique I did on my leg and use them around. You know, I see people talking about the carotid artery. I, I just have to tell you, it's so deep. It's, you'd almost have to remove muscles to get to it or like know the technique. So you're fine to cup and to, to fascia blast all along. Um, I would say, if for anything, head, neck, jaw, you need to include the arms and the chest and the upper back, like at least boobies up, right? Because that fascia runs from inside the body um, up. So I would start with 
cupping of all of that. Then I would go back with the face blaster and I would take uh, the face blaster right along the ridge of the jawline right here and use the two little claws for the poke and wiggle wiggle with that. And then I would ice. I also like the technique, I've, I've shown it before, but like opening your mouth and putting your hands just below your jaw, it tractions it and wiggling it. And if they don't go the same to each side, most likely the jaw is aligned, and whatever, but I've definitely seen people, we have lots of dentists that use the product or recommend the products. Um, so it's basically just get all that tissue loose. What TMJ is, it's not really a diagnosis. It means, I was about to say tibial mandibular. <laughs> no, that's your leg. Uh, I'll think of it in a second, but it's, it just stands for this joint right here. Um, and when it scars up, just like what we saw in the thigh, I, you know, again, we, we, we don't have the vernacular in our science yet, but you know, scarring, fascial adhesion, thick fascia, that's, that's what it looks like. So it's, it's really the same process as anything else that's tight. Okay. We're gonna run out of battery. All right, we're low on battery. Thank God we had electricity. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out on a Friday night. Make sure to stay tuned in next week because I do a new subject every single week. It's all in the HeartBud blog. And thank you to my amazing staff that takes my live feeds and actually turns them into quick little blogs that you can read. We post everything in the HeartBud blog. Um, so you can revisit the live feeds from the past, what, eight weeks? And um, you can also revisit those blogs that have been put together for you. Listen to me, team. The information is there, it's available, you just have to slow down your life a minute and, and really read it, understand it, because understanding fascia could be the thing that completely changes your whole health paradigm. So just take a minute for yourself, get educated, you will be glad that you did. Lots of love for you and thanks. <laughs> love you guys. <laughs>